Good morning, Cross Point, and Merry Christmas. We hope that you are having an amazing day, that you're surrounded by family and friends and loved ones. You know, it's been a pretty amazing season around here these last couple weeks. We had our Christmas at Cross Point last week. We had over 2,600 people in attendance in four services. And undoubtedly, there were many, many people's lives who were impacted by the message of Christmas. Last night, we had our Christmas candlelight service. What an amazing night getting to celebrate Christmas together one more time. And now today, we're gathered together in our own homes, um, and we're going to have some time together online. This morning, you're going to be blessed by an incredible, encouraging word by Pastor Stan um, that is sure to connect to your heart God, wherever you're at this morning. Um, but when we get done with this message, I'm going to jump back on here, give you a couple of little announcements about some things that are coming up in the Crosspoint family in the next few weeks. So for the next few moments, turn your attention to Pastor Stan and let's hear the word that he has to share for us today. Christmas Cross Point. I hope you're having an, an amazing day at home with your family for Christmas. We've had an amazing Christmas season and I really do hope you're having a great day with your family. 
This year we're talking about having peace in the middle of a world that sometime do, sometimes doesn't have a great deal of peace. Jesus said it this way, in this world you're gonna have some trouble, but be of good cheer, I've overcome the world. So it's possible to have peace even in the middle of a world that sometimes is not very peaceful. So our prayer for you during this Christmas season is that you have an amazing season of peace in the presence of God. Here's what we have learned, that peace is not found in the absence of conflict or struggle, but peace is found in the presence of God. The Christmas story is a story of peace, certainly challenges, certainly difficulties, but great peace. Let me read to you from Luke chapter two. In those days, Caesar Augustus decreed that a census would be taken and the entire Roman world would come and they would be a part of that census. Everyone went to their own village and their own town to register. And so Joseph and Mary, who was expecting at the time, leave from Nazareth and they go toward their town. Time came for the baby to be born. And she, as she gave birth, the scripture says, she wrapped the baby in swaddling clothes, placed him in the manger because there was no room for them in the inn. Here's what I want to tell you today. If you want to have peace in your life, you have to make room for Jesus. Here's what 1 Corinthians 2 says. The unspiritual self, by its very nature, cannot receive the gifts of the Spirit because there is no capacity for them. In other words, you can't receive the things of God if you don't make room for God. I read that scripture and I thought about sometimes in, in our home, we have a very old home, a home that's about 100 years old, and we have very limited closet space. So whenever April or I buy something, we'll say to one another, we have to get rid of something else to make room for that. And that's kind of the way our lives are. We live our lives in a lot of a lot of times in ways where we don't make room for the most important things. We're overbooked, we're over we're overused, we're overextended, and sometimes we don't make room for the very things that are going to bring peace in our life. And oftentimes we don't make room for God who wants to bring peace in our life. Here's what I would say to you, if you want peace in your life, you have to make room for the one who brings peace into our life. So I wanna give you some a, a couple of reasons we don't make room for God in our life who can bring peace to our life. Here's the first one. Sometimes we're just overwhelmed with life. Life is just completely overwhelming. We, 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 we wake up and we go to work and we do the things that we do in life, but we're absolutely overwhelmed. Listen to Mark chapter four, verses 18 and 19. Jesus is teaching a parable about the Word of God and the seed of God. And he said there are certain ones that, that they, they receive the seed, but they're overwhelmed with worries about all the things that they have to do and they have to get done. And stress strangles out the seed of God's Word. That, that's our story sometimes. We don't make room for the peace of God in our life because we're so worried and so stressed out about so many other things. There's a story in the scripture about Jesus when he goes to Martha and Mary's house and he begins to talk to them and Mary is sitting at the feet of Jesus and Martha's frustrated because Martha is saying, why are why is she at the feet? Why is she sitting with you? And I'm over here working and the Bible says that she had so many things to attend to and Jesus comes to her and says, Mary's done the thing that is really needed, the thing that is, is really necessary in, in your life, that Mary's done the thing that's most important. The most important thing in our lives is that we have relationship with God. We were created for relationship. As a matter of fact, I would say it this way. If the enemy can't make you bad, if he can't get you to do things that, that, that you know you shouldn't do, he'll make you busy. He'll just create busyness in your life so that you're so overwhelmed that you fail to have the peace that you want. Here's the second reason sometimes we struggle to, to find peace. We don't think we need to make room for God. We think our, our, our lives are okay. We think our families are okay. We think our marriages are okay. We think our careers are okay. We think we're doing pretty good. So many people in the world, and especially in America, feel like they're doing so good in life that they don't need to make room for God. I have a question for you. What if it could be better? 
No matter how good it is right now, what if your life could be better? You know, there's a little bit of arrogance. There's a little bit of pride. There's a little bit of, of kind of, I don't need God self-sufficiency that is encompassed in the idea of I can do it all by myself. Psalm 10 says it this way, people are too proud to seek God. They're not looking for him. So there is no room for God in their life. And here's all I'm saying to you, that if you want to have peace in your life, during this Christmas season, make room for God during this Christmas season because He's the one that brings peace. Whatever you value most in your life, well, that's the thing you turn to. Whatever you think on most in your life, that's the thing you turn to. You cannot fulfill your purpose. I cannot fulfill my purpose without God in our life. And here's the challenge. We're wanderers. We find ourselves wondering about, we get ideas, we get focused. As a matter of fact, we're about to go into a brand new year, year and some of you are already uh, planning your year and you already have your, your resolution set. And you may do good for a week or a, a month, but if you're like me, you wonder. And so the scripture tells us, keep coming back to God. Keep recognizing that if we make room for God, God brings peace into our life. And here's what happens when that happens. We're better because of it. There are reasons we don't bring peace. I've given you two, there are many, but, but we don't make room. But, but when we make room and God brings peace into our life, some great things happen and, and you need to recognize those things. Let me give you a couple of them. You get to know God and you were created to know him. That, that's why you're here on the earth. That's why God placed us here. That's why we're breathing air, because we are here created by God to know the creator who, who spoke us into existence at the very beginning. Listen to what John chapter one says, before anything else existed, there was Christ with God. He has always been alive and is himself God he created everything there is and nothing was created except that he created it. And because of him and his creation, we have life. He goes on in verse 11 of John 1 and says, Jesus comes into the world and to those who actually receive him, he, give them the, he gives them the power to become the sons of God. He gives them the power to walk out this life filled with peace. What does that mean for us? It, it means a few things. It means you need to welcome God into your life. And, and maybe you just kind of scrolled or someone shared this today and, and you are listening to it or maybe you're sitting with your family. I'm telling you, you need to make room for God in your life. So, so when, when we've had folks over during this Christmas season to our house and we, we were making room for them, it, 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 it entailed a few things. Number one, we prepared for them. We wanted to prepare whenever folks were coming to our house. You have to prepare yourself for God. Get ready. As you're heading into a new year, make it your determination that I'm going to make room for God this year. You have to prioritize Him. You have to prioritize God. He doesn't want to be a, a, an additional part of your life. He wants to be the priority of your life. And when He is, and as He is, well, that's when you have peace in your life. And I believe this with all of my heart, you have to partner with him, that, that we have the beautiful opportunity of partnering with God to know him, but not just to know him, but to make him known to the world. That's our assignment. And I promise you, there's nothing you could do that'll bring more joy and more peace to your life than partnering with him. The other big advantage and the big benefit of, of making room for God in your life is what we've been talking about. You get to enjoy the peace of God that, that the scripture says passes all understanding. Does it mean your life is perfect and everything's just right and there's no conflict or no struggle? It doesn't mean that. It just means that in the middle of all of the things that happen in life, we have a God who brings us peace. Jesus said it this way, I'm leaving you with a gift. It's the gift of peace, peace of mind and peace of heart. And the peace I give to you, one translation says, it isn't fragile, it isn't insignificant, 
It isn't something that's here today and gone tomorrow, but it's enduring peace. And the peace I leave with you will last and you don't have to be troubled and you don't have to be afraid. And some of you listening right now, your life over the last season of your life has been marked with struggle or fear or anxiety or stress. Scripture says that God doesn't give us a spirit of fear, but of power and of a, and of, of a loving heart and of a sound mind. In love, one, one, one scripture says, in love there is no room for fear because perfect love casts out fear. So how do we make room for Jesus? How do we make room for God? It's simple. You just invite him into your life. In the scripture in, in the very last book of the Bible, Revelation says, he says, I stand at the door and I'm knocking. And if you'll just open the door and invite me in, I'll come in. And he, and he says, I'll eat with you. Here's what that means. I'll have relationship with you. I'll spend time with you. We'll do life together. That's what God wants for you. In Psalm 37, the Bible says, open up before God, hold nothing back from him. And whatever you need and whatever you desire, it will be made available to you, that if you open up yourself to God and you give him every part of your life, and that's what I encourage you to do today. You want peace in your life? Make room for Jesus. Because when you make room for Jesus, the Prince of Peace is a part of your life and you don't withhold anything from him. You give him everything, I'm telling you, your life will be better because of it. Give him your marriage, give him your children, give him your job, give him your career, give him your dreams, give him your desires, give him your finances, give him everything. And the Prince of Peace will be a part of your life. My prayer is, and our prayer here at Cross Point during this season, is that you have a, a season filled with peace. And as we head into a brand new year, my prayer, our prayer, is that this be a year of great peace and great blessing in your life. I wanna pray with you. Thank you for sharing a few moments with us today. Enjoy the rest of your day. Have fun with the kids and the grandkids. Eat a lot, watch some, some football. Have a great, great day during this Christmas season. Father, I thank you so much for our Cross Point family and for those that are watching alongside of us today and, and being a part of, of this moment with us. And I pray God for great peace in their life. That God, as they make room for you, as they make space for you, as they open up their lives for you, God, that God, you bring something to them that maybe some have searched for, for, for days or weeks or months or maybe even years and, and peace has eluded them. And I pray that in this season, as they turn their hearts completely to you, that they find the peace of God that passes all understanding. And God, I pray for those that, that, that maybe this has been a difficult season, that God, that they would experience the grace and the goodness of God, maybe someone that's lost a loved one or someone that's had some pain, that this be a season where the grace of God is theirs. In Jesus' name, amen. Merry Christmas, everybody. And what an incredible word by Pastor Stan this morning. We hope that it blesses you and your family. And we hope, like we said, that you have a great day today. I want to remind you of a couple of things that are coming up in the next few weeks. One, we will have services this coming Sunday morning, January the 1st, at our regular scheduled times at 9.15 and 11 o'clock. Then kicking off the following week is our 21 days of prayer and fasting. We'll have midweek services on Wednesday. We'll have Saturday morning times of prayer at nine o'clock. It really is a great time for us as a church to kind of recalibrate and start the new year off right. And we really hope that over these next couple of weeks that you would pray about your level of involvement in the 21 days of prayer and fasting. Also, if you would like to make year-end contributions to the church, you can do that online. You can go to the website, cpdalton.com backslash give, or you can scan the QR code that is probably on the screen right now. Once again, we thank you for your generosity 
property. We thank you for being an amazing church family. We thank you for giving the Crosspoint family a great 2022. We look forward to an even better 2023. We're excited to celebrate it with you, and we hope to see you next Sunday at 9.15 and 11 o'clock. Have a great day. Merry Christmas. We love you.